This video is a continuation of the work I've been doing on the Wren number 3 board, trying to get it to work reliably. And if you watch the previous videos, you know I found a number of faults with this board and um, ultimately got it to boot to the uh, operating system, but it was very flaky, kept crashing and kept stopping. So I've been doing some work looking around trying to figure out what was going on with it, why it was doing that. And it's been a combination of using the scope and uh, the infrared camera looking for uh, any devices that are getting hot and uh, slowly i was unearthing um, what appear to be candidates uh, just a, a handful of devices i found that weren't working very well uh, unfortunately on a board of this age you'll find that many of the devices don't give um, particularly good signals out and in fact it's always uh, surprising to me that boards like this of uh, this age work as well as they do because the components um, performance does tend to drop off over time and it's uh, an issue with this board because it does run at high frequency anyway for the time at least and it's really pushing some of the components fairly hard but you can see now that it's uh, it's running fairly reliably it's been running now for well over an hour uh, without any issues and what I've done since the last video, as I say, I've changed uh, about four or five uh, glue logic devices, a couple of buffers, a um, couple of multiplexers that were giving very poor outputs. Um, then it got a bit uh, weird. I found an issue with the uh, system that it would run quite happily indefinitely if I started up something like CPM and just left the CPM start screen on. Uh, but if I left this uh, menu running, then um, essentially it would run for maybe a minute, two minutes and, and then the timer on the screen would, would stop. It looked like the system had crashed but when I pressed the key on the keyboard it would start up again. It would do that a few times and then ultimately the, the board would crash and it wouldn't recover until I reset it. Now what I did is looked at the uh, interrupt lines so there are a number of interrupts and there's a pr kind of priority encoder um, and depending on which interrupt comes in, in and in what order they come in uh, they generate an interrupt in the Z80 the uh, firmware handles the interrupt clears the interrupt and then it moves on to the next uh, if there is one uh, looking at the interrupts that were being generated and I have identified on the schematic the source of each interrupt um, the only interrupts that were being generated in this uh, menu screen were from the uh, real-time clock and from the UART. And um, I assume the UART uh, interrupt was just so that if the unit was connected through IS232 then the UART could flag this up uh, with the processor and then any incoming data could be handled uh, appropriately. I can't just lift the pin to stop that from happening otherwise the self test wouldn't complete. Now I could modify the ROMs so that that part of the self test was ignored uh, but what I did instead was replace the UART and that cleared up that problem. It, it then stopped doing that so I think there was a, a partial failure of the UART. Uh, from that point on it got even uh, more weird that looking at the board through the infrared camera it was clear that some of the devices were getting quite hot and then looking at the enable lines for certain of the buffers and latches there was significant overlap uh, on the enabling of the devices so some were being enabled at the same time onto the same bus and that was obviously causing some contention and probably the instability or at least some of the instability of the board uh, but looking at the schematic it was kind of always going to do that um, with the speed the system was running at we're only talking here about sort of uh, 30 or 40 nanosecond overlap, but that's sufficient to cause some fairly significant current spikes. Uh, and also, because of the relative timing of the signals, uh, it was causing uh, rogue values sometimes to be read uh, into certain latches. And that was, that's what was causing the system to crash. So what I've been doing is kind of heating cooling the board see what's going on it's still not hundred percent stable it'll run for an hour or so uh, and then it uh, won't restart I'll just press the reset button so you can see that if I restart it at any point 
it restarts quite nicely. It's a nice uh, warm restart as well. It retains the real-time clock value. So it's doing what it's supposed to. It's still not 100% correct. Um, I still need to find some uh, other devices that aren't working quite as they should. But where it got very strange was when I received the, this board, and in fact the other two boards as well, they had Z80A processors in, which in theory shouldn't run at 6 megahertz. Bear in mind there's a 6 megahertz clock going to them. And so um, what I had done is replace them with um, a B version of the device. So in theory, this device should run at the frequency required by this board. Um, but I found it doesn't really work very well with a B device. And in fact, just to show what I mean, I've got uh, a tester here. And I, this is quite a nice tester because you can write your own test um, programs for it. And what I've done is write a test procedure for a Z80 that uh, mimics the speed requirement of this board. So if I put in a Z80A and select the Z80, you can see that passes. But if I put in the B version, this is the processor that I was using in the previous video, and press test, you can see that fails, and it will do that every time. This processor will work in other boards, and it works to a certain extent in this board, but it seems that what's going on is that the REN is kind of relying on the slow speed of the Z80 to uh, introduce delays in certain parts of the operation. I don't know if that was intentional by the designers or if it's just because I've got some failing parts on this machine, I still have to investigate it further. But as soon as I put a Z80 in, then that tidied up a lot of the overlaps and they disappeared and those devices stopped getting warm. So that, that's kind of strange. It's um, unusual that you rely on the processor to introduce delays, so I suspect that maybe I've got uh, some more uh, failing devices on here that I need to uh, to weed out. Certainly it's running far more reliably than it was. Um, it's very close now to being uh, reliable enough to consider to be fixed, but I still then need to do a lot of testing on the other peripheral devices. But I thought it was very interesting, so I wanted to share that. So it's just one of these things that uh, if you're just blindly looking for uh, hard faults, that's just failed parts, then sometimes it's, um, it might not happen. You may never fix the unit because there doesn't appear to be any hard faults left on this. They all seem to be uh, performance related and age related to some of the devices. You can see already I've replaced probably 15 devices on this uh, board. Only about four of them had actually failed. Uh, the rest were just um, giving poor outputs, low level signals that uh, just weren't good enough for the performance of this uh, particular unit. And uh, so I'll continue down this route and the way I'm going about this is looking at certain processes. Um, for example I was looking at the uh, interrupt process and that's how I tracked down this uh, issue with the Z80. And um, I'm now going to look at the RTC, I'll look at the UART and I'll look at these as discrete processes because the way that the schematics arranged is each device tends to have uh, a buffer or two that is used to address it. So I can kind of treat each part of the system as a separate uh, subsystem and that should make fault finding a lot easier. Um, I can also of course uh, look at uh, memory speed, that sort of thing, see if there's any issues there. Uh, but it's getting fairly close now so um, I'm hoping within uh, a day or two I can get this board refitted to the chassis and um, then we can move on to doing a, a few experiments and uh, looking at some software. Okay it's about six hours later I've been making some slow progress on this and um, I wasn't really happy with the idea that the developers of this machine would have just thrown in a Z80A to overcome some design issues. 
uh, as I've said in previous videos this is such a well thought out machine and a, an entire package as well with the documentation and the software that comes with it that I was fairly convinced that's not something they would do so I took the uh, alternate approach and decided that there must be some sort of hardware fault on this board and um, I've made some uh, changes and the uh, machine has now been running without issues for four hours. I just turned the brightness back up, I turned it down so that um, it wouldn't burn the screen during the self-test. And um, as I say, it's been running now for a little over four hours without any issues whatsoever. So I think I may have got on top of what's been causing the problem. I haven't tested the um, uh, peripheral devices yet. I've just been trying to get the unit working in a stable manner. And uh, what I did was decided to uh, throw the logic analyzer onto it and so I attach the uh, test leads to the processor and to the uh, EEPROMs and to a couple of the uh, buffer chips which is how I had it connected before to capture data um, but when I did that I connected the clip to the Z80 and the board refused to boot up it wouldn't boot up at all and that's not that uncommon when you get a board that's a little bit uh, close to not running for timing issues or bus loading or something then attaching the analyzer can cause uh, various issues so what i decided to do was to actually use that as uh, an analytical technique so i attached the clip with no leads on it to the z80 and the machine booted fine and the plan was to attach all the test leads one by one until the unit stopped uh, booting up. Now that doesn't mean that the last one to be attached is the one that's causing the problem, it might just be the one that took it over the limit, but it will tend to give me an idea as to roughly where on the board the problem lays. And uh, the sort of testing I was doing was to get the board to boot up, um, slowly heat various areas very gently with the hot air gun. I wasn't getting it particularly hot. I just wanted to introduce some variation across the uh, the board and uh, sure enough that just caused it to crash every time. And so it was very marginal as to whether it would, would run or not. So I started attaching the test leads from the analyzer one by one and ultimately it turned out that the leads that had the most impact were some of the control lines, uh, in particular bus request and memory request. So I started following those control lines back through the glue logic and there were various sections within the system such as here where there is some decoding uh, going on to control various devices and uh, found a particular device, in this case it was this one and um, I replaced that. What was happening is the output was uh, it was glitching, there's a lot of glitches on the output of this device and also on the output of this device and it was causing this uh, flip-flop to be uh, toggled when it shouldn't have been. And this ultimately is what controls the, uh, the transfer of data into and out of the uh, video RAM. And that was causing um, the buffers to be momentarily put onto the data bus when they shouldn't be. So. I replaced the device, um, scoping it the output was it was low, it wasn't terrible, it was just glitching a lot and so uh, it just uh, was a timing issue, the devices weren't all switching as quickly as they should and so we were getting these glitches on the control lines. So I replaced the device and that tidied up the glitching quite a bit, still a little bit, so I replaced the next one back uh, which was showing similar symptoms and then once I'd done that the glitching went away completely. Now part of the instability for this system was because it was running a Z80A which is not really capable of running at the 6 megahertz uh, that the device is being clocked at. That is the device that was in this board when I uh, received it so I don't really know what was going on there uh, but what I've done is put a 20 megahertz Z80 on this board and uh, when I'd done that previously, it's one of the first things I tried with this board and when it was misbehaving, uh, that uh, caused it to not run at all. Uh, but when I put it in now, it's 
resolved seemingly all the uh, problems with this uh, flaky behavior and constant uh, locking up and, and rebooting. So uh, as I say, it's been running now for four hours. The next thing, I'll leave it running overnight uh, like this. I'll turn the brightness right down so I don't get any screen burn. Leave it running overnight. And uh, as long as it's running um, when I come back tomorrow, then what I can start doing is running some uh, more in-depth test programs. Once the system runs, of course, uh, it gives me the option to run some uh, programs from the operating system so I can start testing the peripheral devices, uh, RS-232, A to D, uh, video RAM, that sort of thing. Uh, reading and writing, floppy disks. So I can do a lot of testing now that it's running to this uh, point um, on the assumption it carries on working. So it looks like there were just a couple of devices causing some uh, glitching on the control lines and then putting in the 20 megahertz Z80 uh, means that it's now well capable of keeping up with the clock rate of the machine. And uh, the board's not relying on the processor to run slowly to, um, uh, to keep running at all. So that was just, I think, a side effect of the, the faulty devices meant that coincidentally the, the slower processor would allow it to run to uh, a better degree than the uh, proper full speed processor. Okay, so that's quite an interesting one. It's um, one of those uh, issues you come across that uh, can drive you nuts because the, there isn't a single thing that's causing the problem. It's really a combination of things all coming together and uh, creating a, a situation that prevents the, the board from running correctly. So I uh, hope you found that interesting in the next video, assuming that uh, no faults show up, uh, then what I'll probably do is start doing some uh, more in-depth diagnostics, running a few test programs and uh, see if we can fully test the rest of the board.